All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Tushar Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and your faculty of orthopedics for the PG aspirants as well as the postgraduate residents. Well, I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. And uh, in this particular effort that we are starting from today, we are going to begin a discussion of orthopedics chapter wise. So first of all, we are taking this chapter, which I got to know that most of you are struggling with orthopedic oncology so five minutes and one tumor and we'll simplify that tumor in five minutes and that is our task for the day today so i'm sure you all must have seen this tumor by now this tumor what you're looking at right now is what come on yes everyone in the chat box what is the diagnosis of the tumor that you're looking at right now okay First of all, do you see any growth plate? Well, I don't see any growth plate. So one thing is for sure that this patient has to be skeletally mature since I do not see any growth plate. That means that the age group has to be more than 18 years. I will be more specific here. Age group is 20 to 40 years. Although the x-ray does not mention the sex of the patient, but let me tell you, females are more commonly involved as compared to males. Now, if you see this particular x-ray, you can very well tell me that the tumor is located not only in epiphysis, but extending up to the metaphysis. I'm sure you can see that. So, when I say that, I can definitely make it like this, that this tumor is epiphyseo metaphyseal in location. I can certainly say that this tumor is more close to one side of the bone as compared to the opposite side of the bone. So the tumor is going to be an eccentrically located tumor. I'm sure you all can appreciate that this tumor has occupied almost the entire condyle of the femur and even bone more than that. So it is definitely an expensile tumor which is expanding. And the fourth E, I want you to understand that it shows something which is called as eggshell crackling. Cut, 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 cut. Now, there is a fifth E. Technically, what they say is that in this topic, what they say is that you have four E's. If you ask me, no, there is a fifth E also. There's a fifth E. There's a five E. What is that fifth E? It extends just up to the subarticular margin. And that is the beauty of this tumor in most of the cases that it does not go exactly into the joint line. I'm sure you all can appreciate the joint line here. So it is extending up to the joint line, but does not extend into the joint line. So that is again another benefit of this, the, 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 the tumor, even though it is aggressive. Okay, this is the problem. Now, before I go further, looking at the picture, I can make one thing for sure that it is not typically benign, just like a chondroblastoma or other thing. It is not typically malignant like uh, osteosarcoma. It is something which is locally aggressive. It is something which is locally aggressive. It is something which is locally invasive. That's one thing that I want to mention. Now, apart from this, I'm sure if you can see, there's a significant cortical thinning all around it. So you can see the significant cortical thinning and even there is some soft tissue invasion and even if there is some uh, cortical break at certain areas. But now, apart from this, what is the most important thing is, I'm sure if you see this, it is a kind of a destruction which is well defined. Now, there's a subject, we all have read that subject, geography, geographical maps. What is so peculiar about geographical maps that whether you can change the boundaries of the countries on the geographical map can you change the boundaries of the countries by yourself no you can't so this is something which is a very well defined destruction with a very regular margin and that is what is called as geographical destruction so you certainly can see on that x-ray on this x-ray you certainly can see a well defined geographical lytic lesion but along with that, of course, you cannot say air, you cannot see water on an x-ray. But I'm, I'm sure one thing is which I can make it out here. There's a single large air-filled sinusoid. It can have septum, it cannot have septum. So we have a single large air-filled sinusoid. Now, this single large air-filled sinusoid is what we call as, as Dr. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Harleen Baba, I think, has mentioned it is absolutely right. This is what is called as soap bubble appearance. So, because of the single large airfield sinusoid, we have something which is called as soap bubble appearance. 
So you can see the soap bubble appearance. You can see the well-defined geographical lytic destruction. You can see the skeletal maturity, the age group. Now, before I go further, let me tell you one more thing: that distal femur is the most common bone which is involved, and particularly the side of the distal femur. I've already mentioned epiphyseal metaphyseal. So, any conclusions? No, there are no conclusions. Even though radiologically you have come to the conclusion which most of the people have written in the chat box, but still I'm not going to conclude that why because we do not conclude anything unless and until we don't perform a biopsy. Now, when we perform a biopsy, we see 40 to 60 nuclei containing 40 to 60 nuclei containing cells, which is what is called as multinucleate giant cells. We see multinucleate giant cells and we see those multinucleate giant cells in a malignant stroma. We saw those we see those giant cells in a malignant stroma of mononuclear cells in a malignant stroma of mononuclear cell. Now when I come to this conclusion, then of course I can say that I'm be dealing with giant cell tumor or I'm dealing with another name of this tumor also what is called as osteoclastoma management is very simple you have to go for a wide excision you just cannot you know you 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 just cannot be uh, i mean you cannot leave it as such for sure so you will have to go for a wide excision along with wide excision i would like to mention one more thing that is extended curettage not only curettage, Dr. Harleen, extended curettage is required. You have to ensure that every single layer is scraped properly. And that has to be, you know, followed by a combination of aloe plus autograft. All right. So wide excision, extended curettage, a combination of autograft plus allograft. Allograft alone is not good. Autograft alone is not good. A combination of the mosclized grass have to be put inside to treat this tumor. Recurrence is around 33%. Yes, that's for sure. But yes, this is the first tumor that we have discussed today. So we'll be doing these YouTube live sessions where we'll be, we'll, we'll be taking one tumor. We'll be covering that tumor in five minutes and then the next video it will take another tumor. And this way we will take individually all the tumors and we'll finish this chapter of oncology. The next tumor I'm telling you right now is one of the commonest variant of this tumor that we have discussed here that is what is called as aneurysmal bone cyst where not only we'll teach you about aneurysmal bone cyst but also we will teach you how to differentiate it from this tumor that is GCT. So stay tuned to the channel and stay tuned for more updates. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. God bless all of you.